Okay, so if everything went to plan, my last video, hopefully you've seen it, uh, includes all the interior installation, not interior, inner quarter panel uh, fabrication and installation other than around the windows because we still have to get windows. Um, so if all goes to plan, you've seen that video. And if you haven't, it's a good time to see it. Right up here. Uh, what I'm going to do today is I've got a little bit of welding to finish. Um, I've got a lot of welding to finish, but a little bit on the inside of the car. And then for a change in pace to interrupt your regularly scheduled welding, um, I am going to do some cleanup, some paint and some seam seal. So if you haven't been following along and you're new to this, welcome. Uh, this is the interior of my 55 Chevy two-door conversion. Uh, this is a new one-piece floor pan. Uh, I just finished that tow board. I didn't do a video on that. It's got new rockers. It's I fabricated and stole repurposed pieces from, uh, from the four-door to make the inner panels. Uh, I have a very few things left to do in here besides uh, clean. And then I'm going to be seam sealing and welding, no, seam sealing and painting everything. Some of you have noticed that this is a hardtop floor. Hardtop floors have this brace that goes across here, this extra bracing. Uh, and, and I was asked specifically why I put a hardtop floor in a sedan. Uh, well, that wasn't my choice. This is all I could get a couple of years ago when I was, uh, Trying to get this, uh, all I could get was a hardtop floor pan because uh, things were a little hard to get at that time. So I've got a little bit of welding to finish in this corner over here. Uh, I cut these braces, these vertical braces, when I replaced the floor. And I have to uh, come up with a way to attach them. Uh, I don't care if it's correct or looks correct or anything because that's not what this car is about. So I have to uh, make up something where I can tie that into the floor. Uh, I'm gonna have to put a little twist on that center one. So those those are kind of the big thing um, I've got a little bit of patch to do in here on each side uh, Where the uh, new inner structure ties to this aftermarket door jam um, I've already done the tow board and then I have a little bit of wire wheeling some vacuuming and uh, it's on to uh, Seam seal and paint. So I'm gonna do from this lip from this drip edge, whatever you want to call it, this lip where the rocker joins the floor on both sides. Uh, I still have to grind that side a bit, I think. So I'm going to do from lip to lip. I'm not going to touch the rockers, not going to touch the door jams. They're all going to need work later. Uh, everything needs work. But I need a break from welding, so I'm going to do some welding. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, move on to cleaning up. All right, so all the welding's done. That's amazing for me um see i finished all up there made those pieces that go across there shaped them in kind of and then sealed up over there um i think i mentioned in my last video but those round holes and stuff they're all going to get covered with the sound deadening stuff so i'm not really worried about that uh i guess i just got to clean this crap out of here i've got the exhaust fan uncorked and going because once I get into wire wheeling this stuff, it's a lot of dust and I want it all out. So I'm going to get into uh, removing some of this crap out of here and then I'll uh, maybe put you on a time lapse while I do some wire wheeling and uh, we'll get looking at vacuuming out, getting ready for seam seal.
Okay, so this is a bit of an occasion because uh, I've been working on this car for, we don't want to talk about how long, in years. Um, but uh, yeah, all the welding, apart from the window channels where I have to uh, make something happen for the quarter windows once I get the glass. Uh, apart from that, all the welding on the inside of the car is complete. That's a huge milestone for this project. Um, as I've mentioned, this was a four door and not a very good one. Uh, and I've converted it to a two door and replaced the floor and did a whole bunch of rust repair. Inner wheel wells, uh, trunk, the whole back of the car. Uh, so I'm excited to get past this and then I can move on to the exterior of the car. I've got a couple of things that are sort of hanging over my head and then it's really just go around the whole car and make sure I didn't miss anything and touch up little things as I go. Um, so let me show you where I'm at now and, and what I'm up to. Okay, so the, these are the products I use. Um, nothing sponsored. Uh, I just buy this stuff like everybody else. So this, um, Brush on seam sealer I only discovered on this project and I wish I had it years ago because I used to buy it by the tube and then I'd spread it around my fingers and it made no sense when the tubes are like $14 for a tube and this is like $14 for a whole can. It goes a long way. Normally uh, I don't like POR15. It's just a preference. It's just not my favorite product. I usually use this Dominion Sure Seal 16. It's kind of like a Canadian knockoff version of uh, DOM16 of POR15. Um, I, I like it. I used it on the underside of the car. It turned out pretty good. Um, however, on the inside of the car, uh, this stuff's about 50 bucks a can. So, uh, Canadian. Um, so on the inside of the car, I'm not really that worried about it. I'm just going to use this interior exterior rust paint. Uh, it was like 15 bucks. Semi-gloss black. Most of what I'm doing, let me show you is I'm going to this whole floor that comes factory with E-code on it or something, I'm gonna paint all that. I'm gonna paint the whole thing. Um, the only spots that I'm gonna not paint too closely is uh, around the bolts where the seat mounts go because I'm gonna have to make brackets later to go with the, the seats. Um, also, I'm, I'm sure I'll screw it up when I have to, um, I'm not sure what I'm putting in here for a seat yet, but Regardless, it's uh, probably going to require some sort of attachments and uh, and stuff. And then I'm going to have to cut a hole for shift cable, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to mess it up later, but that's okay. I just want to clean this all up and have it look like something. Uh, it's more for my own sanity. So what I want to do is all the areas in here. Now from factory, these were only spot welded. But I've full welded everything all the way around. The whole floor, all the way around. Everything has been full welded. Um, just to make it, with this car being cut up as much as it is, I want it to be strong. I've said that in some of my other videos as well. So what I want to do is I'm going to tape this off either side. And then snap kind of a line. And then I'll brush the seam sealer on. And then I'll just kind of spread it around. Uh, I might use my fingers with gloves and that sort of thing. Uh, same thing here. I might not get carried away with the uh, uh, taping on here because I am going to put some seam sealer on here, um, like on the vertical pieces and stuff. I might not get carried away with that. It really, it's taping it off is overkill for a floor anyways, but um, I want it to look nice or try to. Uh, every weld, every weld here will probably get seam sealed. Uh, that's my plan anyways, and I can come up to about here because uh, The window channel stuff that I have to do later will be from here up and I'll have to maybe cut this out and do some things We'll see um, But right now I'm gonna start get in here. I vacuumed everything out Now there is some dust residue and stuff. I'm not worried about it. It's a floor Um if you were, if this was a show car or going to be a show car finish, well, I wouldn't be using these products. First of all, I'd use the, I would use the seam seal, but I wouldn't use the paint. Um, but if it was a show car or something, or you're really concerned, you could wipe it down with prep wash. Uh, it, that's good stuff. But uh, for me, I'm just going to go at it. See how it goes.
All right, seams are sealed. Uh, the tape didn't hold, tape didn't hold as well as I would have liked, but it doesn't really matter. I wasn't really looking for perfection. Um, so uh, the most part, for the most part, everything's sealed up. I think it's, I think it's gonna be good. Uh, I'm just trying to get, prevent moisture from getting into the welds and rotting the welds. It's not gonna happen anyways. The welds are stronger than the metal. Anyways, let me show you what I've got and then I'm gonna start painting. Now I did take it off a little early, but um, you can see it did snap a pretty good line. Uh, over here, I didn't, didn't really care too much because it's just gooped on. Uh, in the corners, I stuffed a lot in the corners uh, because it's just a spot where stuff collects and everything. You can see I did the vertical pieces here where the vertical welds are on the panels. Um, yeah, so like this is factory dum-dum or, or which is a type of seam sealer, I guess that's, um, that would have been used. So this is much the same as what I'm doing now. Um, so the floor is all sealed in. So I did this all on the underside ages ago. Uh, check out some of the other videos when I put this floor in. But uh, I seam sealed it all underneath. Everywhere there's a weld on this car has um, has something on the outside and something on the inside, if I can help it. Uh, there's nothing uh, left exposed. So, at least to the best of my memory, anyways. And I put it some here on this little lip because I figured uh, there were spot welds all the way along there. Um, yeah, so you just kind of wait until it's mostly not tacky, which is kind of what it is now, and you just start painting. Um, it's not a, a perfect science, it's not a perfect art, but uh, um, yeah, it should be good. So let's see how many times I can paint myself into a corner. Uh, where am I gonna start? I don't know where I'm gonna start. I don't know where I'm gonna end, but uh, invariably I'll be stuck in the middle and won't be able to get out of the car. Uh, also, of note, anytime you're using the seam sealer or you're using uh, uh, floor paint or, or anything like that, um, just use cheap brushes that you can throw away, one-time use. Uh, it's, there's no, you're not cleaning this stuff out of it. But I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, once I paint over it, it'll look nice. You'll see the little brush strokes, it'll be good.
So that's all one color looking like it's new. Um, it'll dry, it should dry to a semi-gloss because it says it's semi-gloss. Uh, I've got runs and I've got streaks and I've got whatever, but it doesn't matter because it's a floor, it's covered. And you can see where like the seam seal, it all ties it all together. Um, later on when I'm doing wiring and whatever else, I'm going to have to take out that upper insulation and remove all it. I've got one more trick that I uh, do um, when I'm doing floor stuff and I've done a bunch of floors, but uh, the other thing I do is I like, take a can of rubberized undercoat and I'll put heavy texture where I want, like where the welds are and stuff, and then just mist, kind of mist a texture over the majority of it. Um, it just gives it a nicer look. Like the inside of the door, I did that way. You can kind of tell uh, where I did this uh, door skin. So I'm going to do that now, just uh, mist a bit at the front and at the sides where the uh, those new panels are. Uh, I'm not going to do the bulk of the floor or anything. I might just, you know, put a little spritz here and there. And that's probably it until it dries. Okay, so you can see I added a bit of texture. You can see that it's textured up there, textured back here, textured on the wheel well. See, like you can't even see there was a big giant patch on that wheel well on both sides. Uh, you can't tell because it sort of all ties together once you do the seam seal, the paint, and then the rubberized. The rubberized just gives it a bit of texture. And then, like I said, I just missed it a little bit across the floor to just kind of blend it in. Um, not necessary on this floor and like i said i'm gonna have to didn't get crazy because i'm gonna end up cutting into it in spots if i want to make seat mounts or whatever else it's just to prevent rust um and to sort of tie everything together the old metal and the new metal and the reused metal and all that stuff um if you look down here like you can't see anything there now it's all welded solid but you can't see anything where it's been welded because it's kind of all blended in with uh, with rust preventative measures. I didn't do up here yet because uh, I don't know why I didn't because I didn't feel like it. I'm not really sure what I'm doing there yet. I got to strip out this all this goop on this window channel. Um, yeah, it's getting to be uh, something. It's nice to look inside and, and see this like the whole underside of the car looks like this. Um, let's have a look at that. All right, so this is all the same. Um, this, you can't really tell other than spots that I missed uh, on the frame. Now this body was off the frame, uh, but this is new floor right here. This is a weld line with seam seal. Um, this is a new pan where, the, uh, where there's no more spare tire well. Uh, so you can't kind of can't really see it in there. And then this is the seam to the new floor. Uh, that's where I was doing some welding and set the car on fire, which was fun. I try to do that every now and then. Um, yeah, so I've got some touch-ups to do here because you can see where my welding was, where I welded in that brace. But you see the smooth finish of the floor pan, and then I just blended it with that textured stuff. And then this is just seam sealed on the outside, uh, rubberized undercoat painted and then rubberized undercoat. And it just sort of ties everything together. It's not gonna fool anyone at a concourse level cause it's not that kind of car, but it certainly, you know, um, it certainly uh, ties everything together and uh, does a pretty good job at masking and hiding my, my repair work. Um, you, you can kind of see where I've replaced this inner wheel well. It's all the same thing. And then you see on the inner quarter, the seam where the lower quarter meets the upper quarter. 
that's all seam sealed and rubberized and all that stuff too. So it's just the same on the other side. Um, it really just ties everything together and stops it from uh, turning into what it already wants. Okay, so that's it uh, for today. I can't really do anymore. Um, I have to wait till this dries and then I will make a bunch of dust in here and it will all look like crap again. But the nice thing is I'll be able to vacuum it out and blow it off or whatever and it'll all be fine. The uh, other thing is that this whole thing will get like kill mat or sound deadening or something. Um, I like that stuff. It worked pretty good in my truck and a couple other things. Uh, so I guess my next project I have uh, just the driver's door needs a patch um, at the bottom, sort of the bottom front corner. Then I need to bolt the fenders on and line up the doors. Uh, well, finish lining up the doors. They're pretty much where they are, where they're gonna be. Uh, and then I need to go around and gap the car and, and uh, finish gapping the car and seal up any trim holes and I got two antenna holes. It's got an antenna for the, in the fenders and in the rear quarter, I got to fill those holes. Uh, and then it's just kind of work my way around the car and make sure um, I've got everything done. And I'm getting closer to priming. Thanks for watching and uh, check out my other videos. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and uh, Instagram as well, Slow Car Fix. Um, yeah. Take care, hope everyone's well, and uh, thanks for watching.